On December 18, 1926, in a small town in rural Oklahoma, a very unique little girl was born into a simple, hardworking Christian family. Her given name was Laverne, and she was our precious mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, aunt, and friend. My name is Gina, and I am her youngest child. On behalf of my brothers and sisters, and on behalf of our children, we thank you for coming today and having us here at St. Andrews to help us honor and remember her. Like many growing up during the Depression, Mom didn't have an easy childhood. However, she never felt sorry for herself, but rather she tried to pass along to her family the life lessons of self-reliance and simple gratitude for having our needs met, even at the expense of our wants. We all grew up with stories of how her grandmother, who mostly raised her, would grow their own vegetables in the summer, or can the food for the harsh winters, and who would personally go outside and bring the chicken's neck when they were blessed to have them for supper. This no-nonsense pragmatism helped shape our mom, and perhaps inspired one of her favorite sayings to us, that the women in this family are not whips. And without faith in God, that 
that thought would be utterly terrifying. Her mother was maybe not ordinary or typical, in that she didn't really have friends over for luncheons or take us girls to the beauty parlor or take her son to the country club to play tennis. She wasn't really comfortable with the mother-daughter fashion shows. But none of us would have traded her for anyone else. Our mom was a simple woman of deep faith and conviction and completely without pretense or vanity. She shared with us those things that she found more valuable and less trivial. She taught us about St. Thomas More by watching a man for all seasons and explaining it. She taught us to love God's earth by walking, working in her garden, and cultivating her precious lemons and gardenias. She taught us to love the simplicity of home by teaching us to sew a hem, prepare a meal, or make a pie. She taught us about compassion and human bonding and the love of family every time she put a pot of coffee on for Uncle Frankie, even when she didn't have time to do so. She taught us to respect ourselves, body and mind, as children of God. You wouldn't put garbage in your body by eating trash, she would say, so why would you put it in your mind? She taught me about what it means to be a mother each time I watched her stroke Sophia's hand or tenderly kiss Julia's head. Our mom cultivated what is beautiful, simple, and pure in this world, and she practiced what she preached. She tried throughout her life to direct and redirect us in ways that would enable us to live honorable lives and in ways which would ultimately lead us to heaven. While mom valued things of genuine quality, she was not a materialist. She would often remind us that you never saw a hearse go by pulling a U-Haul. One of the last things she said to us was, things don't matter. People matter. Relationships matter. In her last illness, our mom showed remarkable courage because it was important to her to set an example for her children and her grandchildren. Knowing her time on earth was drawing to a close, Mom took the opportunity from her deathbed to remind the children and grandchildren to always be true to themselves, to be patient, to resist peer pressure, and to always do the right thing. Mothering, guiding, and teaching us to the end. There was a yearning in Mom that she shared with all of us at various times. It was a homesickness, a longing, an emptiness that none of us could satisfy. Not even my sweet father, who was her one true love, and the only love of her life. At one point she thought it might be homesickness for the prairie of her youth. But later, Mom came to understand and share with us that it was the timeless thirst we all feel which is not quenched until we are home with our Creator. Mom made her wishes and beliefs known to us clearly and often. She told me to let my girls know Grandma was not afraid. She died as she had lived, with dignity. Death is not perversion, she frequently reminded us. Death is supposed to be going home again and knowing the place for the first time. So welcome home, Mom. Your work here is done and you have earned your reward. I hope you and Dad are slow dancing the Skylark or playing canasta with Frankie and Leonard. I pray that when you now look in the mirrors of heaven, you recognize the beautiful soul you are and always have been. Pray for us left behind that we may have the courage and faith to persevere on our own journeys so that one day we may all be reunited again as a family. 
along with our Lord Jesus and his blessed mother. Until that day, Mom, rest assured, we will never, ever forget you, and we will never stop missing you.